Folks in your family will fight for this frying pan at your funeral. Hey, you're watching Big Lou Barbecue and other things I want to do. And today I want to do a follow-up review of the Field Company Skillet. I did a review last Monday and it was an initial unboxing review and first cook type thing. You don't get a lot of information from those kind of videos because the person using it doesn't know much about it. All right, so it's only proper and fitting that I do a follow-up review. So that was last Sunday when I did that cook and you saw the video last Monday and I'm shooting this again on Sunday evening a week later and you're gonna see this video on that following Monday about the field skillet. Now I've had some experience with it. You don't believe me? It was kind of charcoal gray when it came out of the box. It's black. It's black. And it works. And I'm impressed with it. Really, really nice skillet. Only about six pounds, guys. So anyway, let me show you some of the things I cooked in it. We'll come back, we'll talk more about the skillet. I do wanna thank the field company for sending it to me for a review. It's only fair that I do this follow-up review. Well, at first night, you have to do cornbread in a cast iron skillet, right? What is a cast iron skillet if you can't do cornbread? Cornbread was wonderful. Monday night, that's Alaskan rockfish you're looking at. Seared Alaskan rockfish on cast iron. I did four fillets. These are the first two. And the skillet was still easy to clean up. Very little sticking at all, if any. And, I mean, it just cleaned up easy. Next night, sirloin steak and butter and herbs, the way we like it. Skillet was easy to clean that night, too. And just getting some more good uh, seasoning layer on there with that skillet. Well, the next morning, it's fresh fried beignets. Who doesn't like fresh fried beignets, man? Beignets are a wonderful breakfast. And uh, I did make these a little thin. The recipe calls for them to make about a dozen, and I rolled them out to where I had about 18. So they were a little bit thin, but they were still delicious. Uh, so I well, actually wound up frying 18 beignets that day. You flip them over, and then when they're ready, you're going to pull them out, and you're going to cover them in powdered sugar. Best served with cafe au lait. That's a coffee with chicory and milk and sugar in it and everything. Wonderful, wonderful breakfast that was. After the beignets, I had the oil in there, so I decided to fry up a mess of pork rinds, put it in the popping pellets, and they just puff up like that. Who doesn't love fresh fried pork rinds? And when you fry them at home, man, you can season them however you want to season them, you know? So pork rinds in it. Now, Wednesday night, my son was wanting some scallops. And we don't do that a whole lot on my budget because uh, scallops aren't really readily available too much in my area. They were from a frozen bag, but um, still, you know, every now and then we'll splurge on some scallops. And these were covered in a lemon garlic butter rub. And the butter is lemon butter. That's right, it's melted butter with lemon juice in it. Well, lemon juice is acidic. And I'm doing it in a cast iron pan? Yes, I was. Not only that, a new cast iron pan that had only been using since Sunday, and I was already trusting the seasoning coat to use acidic foods like lemon butter. Uh, they were delicious, and all that fond on the bottom of the pot went into my shrimp etouffee. There's a pound of shrimp, or a little more than a pound of shrimp in there, also a can of Rotel tomatoes, but you can see the seasoning on the bottom was just fine with the shrimp etouffee. So shrimp etouffee and seared scallops was our dinner that night with French bread toast. And, you know, the next day, grilled cheese sandwiches, hamburger helper. A skillet's got to do stuff like this. Make pancakes, right? Uh, pancakes were delicious. Spam, you know, a number 10 skillet should hold a whole can of Spam when it's sliced to the right thickness. And uh, the Spam came out delicious, too. Who doesn't love Spam, man? Yeah, yeah, I got to use Spam in a premium skillet, right? There's some shrimp fried rice that I made in it. All right, bread pudding. and Serve that bread pudding with a hot rum salt. Man, it was good. All right, there's fried green tomatoes. Did that on Saturday afternoon. Now, when you go fry foods, the best foods to fry is green tomatoes. Love fried green tomatoes, all right? And um, had four of them, sliced them in about 17 slices or so, and uh, did, you know, th two full batches and then three more for that last batch that you'll see here in a minute. Now, the way you make fried green tomatoes, I have a video on it, but, um, you just slice them, put some salt on them for about 10 minutes, and uh, you dip them in buttermilk, dip them in uh, seasoned cornmeal, and uh, just fry them up. Some people fry them in flour, but I think they're best fried in cornmeal, you know? And uh, flipping them one more time here. But can you not smell those fried green tomatoes? Love 
fried green tomato. Now they're all gooey on the inside, crispy on the outside. Time to come out. All right. And that's the first batch. All right. But they were wonderful. I could eat fried green tomatoes all day long. Now that's Natchitoches meat pies going in there. You can bake Natchitoches meat pies, but they're best if they're deep fried. All right. They were absolutely wonderful. Skillet did a good job with it. Not burning either side of the Natchitoches meat pies. All right. That is chicken pan pie. It's chicken pot pie, but in a pan, and you can see it was delicious. Well, as you can see, I'm now speaking from experience, not just a first-time user. You know, an unboxing video doesn't give you a whole lot of information because the guy doesn't know a whole lot about it, right? I've used it as much as I can. Look how black it is. Came sort of charcoal gray. Did get a little bronze that first day or two, but it blackened up real quick. It's as seasoned as I've ever had a skillet. I've only had it a week. It's nice. Only seasoned in the oven once. I think that was after the hamburger helper. I only use soap on it twice. I'm not an anti-soaper. Uh -uh. um, some people are, never use soap on cast iron. Some people are, oh, you can use a little soap every time. I use soap if it's needed. It was needed after the hamburger helper and it was needed after the cornbread. So I use soap on it twice. Look, if you're using cast iron, your paper towel or what dish rag coming out with that black stuff on it, you need to use a little soap, just a little, not much. But, um, you know, took care of it like you're supposed to take care of cast iron, put it back on the stove, seasoned up, you know, did fine. All right, now Field Company sent me this. It's not something I probably would have bought. Uh, I'm not in the market for bespoke, I uh, heard that word, you know, custom premium cast iron. I didn't know what bespoke was, I had to look it up, right? Uh, I thank them for sending it to me, but I'm not just going to give you a glittering review because they sent it to me. There were a couple things I don't like. Um, kind of iffy on the lack of pour spouts. Uh, yeah, you saw in our first video, I tried to pour red eye gravy out of it and it, it dripped down. It's a thin gravy. Some, uh, I took it about, this was Sunday. I cooked in it in the first day and then about Tuesday or so. I put a mug, coffee mug of water in it and poured the water back into the coffee mug. Spilt a bunch of it. Did that about four or five times till I could get it going every time and practice pouring. I practiced pouring. Now, I didn't video that segment, but I practiced pouring out of it. Um, I don't know. Pouring the oil out without the pour spouts. I don't know if that was a good or bad thing. I might have spilt it with the pour spouts, too. I will say, when I dumped the potatoes out that first day, when I dumped the shrimp creole out, um, not shrimp creole, what did I make? Shrimp etouffee, right? Um, and the gravy from the pork chops and stuff when I dumped the leftover out. Uh, that did well because it's real thick and stuff. The thinner things like the oil, bacon grease. I haven't cooked bacon in it yet, by the way. By the way, this is a skillet review and I didn't cook any bacon. Everybody else does that. I didn't cook bacon in the first one either, right? Um, but when I pour, you know, hamburger meat grease out of it, that's what it was. I don't know if I'd, I think I'd prefer a pour, pour spout, to be honest. All right, the walls are kind of straight. A lot more like a saute pan than a traditional skillet. Ah, uh, when I'm making the, I made some, the Parmesan cheese things, when I'm making the uh, pancakes, you gotta watch your kind of spatula. You can't get your spatula in quite at the same angle you can with the skillet that has more flared out sides. Uh, but you've got these higher, straighter sides, more like a saute pan, and that's a good thing when you're doing stuff like sauteing, right? Uh, also, this is kind of nitpicky, but I've got an induction stove and both skillets that I have, my other number 12 skillet, same size bottom. They fit on that burner that over there that I use my number 10 skillet on. But with the other one, since the sides flare out, I've got to kind of duck under and look to see if it's centered on that burner on that gl glass top induction stove. Where this one, I can be standing in my cooking position and just look down and see that it's perfectly centered over that burner. So that, that's a you know, very technical, personal thing. All right, what I, so I don't, I'm kind of iffy on the pour spouts and the thin walls, that makes it lighter. But when I was deep frying and I had my thermometer probe in there, this little clip, and I had to bend it and whatever, but it still, it doesn't fit on these thin little walls like it does on my enameled cast iron cookware or my other skillet. And, um, for deep frying and it was kind of annoying. It would come out and maybe I got to get a different clip or bend this clip or something like that. Um, 
until I do that, I probably won't choose this one for deep frying anymore, just because that's my clip that I use on my digital thermometer for deep frying and stuff. And you know, it doesn't fit this skillet like it fits the others. Yeah, those are my only two negatives about this skillet. If the company's gonna send me something to review, I'm gonna, I'm gonna review it and I'm gonna try to find something bad to say about it. That's all I can say bad about it. I really like the handle. The handle doesn't look that cool on YouTube. Every video I saw, and even looking at it on the camera, it doesn't look as cool as it is in real life. It feels awesome. I just love the way this handle feels. Maybe it's because I got big hands, whatever. I like the way this handle feels. That handle is fantastic. Now, some of them have like these stay cool handles, like shaped like a Y. You can't get up on it if you need to grip it with, you know, of course you're gonna use a glove if it's hot, but you know, if it's not too hot, because you had a pie in it, it cooled off or something, you know, you can get up close and hold it like that. Helper handle, some people said it's small. Well, it's a lighter skillet. You don't need a big helper handle on a lighter skillet. You need a big helper handle on a heavier skillet. So what does that tell you, right? Um, one more thing I want to talk about. I think in the industry, they call it trade dress. Uh, that's the style, the image that something's trying to promote, that a company's trying to promote, you know, like beer companies will have their image that they're trying to promote, you know, Mountain Dew, the soda company has their, you know, wild um, extreme sports image they're trying to promote, you know, cigarette companies used to be good at it, you know, brands like Lucky Strike and Chesterfield were, you know, more sophisticated and Marlboro was more for the rugged outdoorsman and cowboy and stuff like that, you know, field dress, what they're trying to promote. Look at this skillet. With the exception of the pour spouts, it looks like a skillet. And it looks like it'd be right at home in a Western movie without being period inaccurate. Some of these competitions, they kind of look like they'd be at home in a science fiction movie or something, you know? Like, you know, something that Q would give James Bond as a skillet, you know? Looks like, hey, James, this one looks like a stop sign. You know, I... I with a steel handle on it. Um, some of them have these big long handles with a big and a big old helper handle. And if you gotta have a big old helper handle, that tells me, hey, that's a heavier skillet. Some of them look more like a traditional skillet, but they still got the thick walls and they're still heavy. The only thing is the bottom's smooth and they're kind of bronze. And speaking of trade dress, there's one of the companies um, didn't appeal to me at all because I'm a dude. If I was a lady, it probably would. It's got like these cutesy names for their skillets, models and stuff, instead of just calling them the traditional, you know, number 10, number 12, number eight, whatever, number four, number five. I like 10 and five skillets. Those are my favorite ones, by the way. Um, I do have an eight that dates to the Roosevelt administration that I use a lot. One that dates to the other Roosevelt administration that I use a lot actually predates that one. And uh, it's got a gate mark on the bottom, but Instead of using like traditional skillet numbers, use like fancy names, like girly cutesy names. You know, like these girly toys, you know, like when your daughter was young, you know, like My Little Pony or Barbie or American Girl, and you buy like the one, and then you gotta buy like their friends and get the whole collection of the cutesy little names, you know? So you gotta, that, that, that one didn't appeal to me at all. I'm not just saying this because Field Company is the one that sent me the skillet. If the other companies want to send me a skillet to review, I'll be glad to review it. But I appreciate the style of this. It kind of fits my style. Um, the other, some of them are a little too cool for me, you know, a little too new, a little too techno for me. So anyway, the, that's what I got to say about the Field Skillet. I used it. And if I didn't like it, I would have quit using it. I continued to use it all week. It was a labor of love. It wasn't tough. It wasn't tough to decide, hey, I wanna cook something else in this skillet. So that's what I gotta say about it. Um, it is fancy premium iron. They're trying to, they, they do a lot of work. They're trying to get the money, you know, and it goes into designing a nice piece of raw iron. I will say they are selling raw cast iron like at enameled cast iron prices, but look how easy it's seasoned in one week. It's not that charcoal gray color. It's black, all right? almost like a mirror finish. I'm, I'm, I'm really satisfied with the skillet. Anyway, I think you would be too if you're in the market for a premium cast iron skillet. 
my recommendation is go with Field. I do want to thank Field for sending it to me, but I'm not just giving them a glittering review because they sent me a skillet. I'm giving them a glittering review because they sent me a nice skillet. It's a nice skillet. Thanks for watching Big Lou Barbecue.